Imagine a society where people live in constant fear for their lives. Where hospitals don't treat people for their illnesses, but kill them instead. Because someone determines that their lives are no longer worth living. Where we no longer struggle with accommodating people's disabilities. Because the disabled are simply disposed of before they become a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, it is precisely this kind of society that is waiting for us if we openly embrace the concept of euthanasia. Euthanasia is the intentional and direct killing of a patient by a physician or another party. It is most commonly done by use of a lethal injection and was originally suggested as a compassionate means to end pain and suffering. This was the motive of Dr. Elsborst, the architect of the euthanasia laws in the Netherlands. As of 2002, euthanasia is legal in the Netherlands. However, it was regularly performed there without consequences long before that. Here's something to think about. 25 to 30 percent of Dutch euthanasia cases involve patients who did not give their consent to be euthanized. But these facts are not disturbing if euthanasia is considered to be a value to society. Supporters of euthanasia would argue that we should end lives that are no longer worth living. So let me ask you a basic question. What makes your life worth living? Is it how much money you have? Or how many friends you have? Is it based upon how healthy you are? I heard the story of a boy who was born without eyes, who would never be able to walk and whose fingers were deformed. Some would say this poor boy should have just been killed at birth. However, this same boy has now won several awards and is known around the world for his incredible musical talent. What determines the quality of his life? Who determines the quality of his life? What about the person in the hospital? Does suffering or pain make life not worth living? If so, how should we define pain and suffering? You see, for those who support euthanasia, the categories known as pain and suffering have grown and continue to grow. Consider an elderly person with severe depression. Should this person be euthanized? Why should we resort to treating the physically and mentally ill by killing them? One study showed that the majority of depressed elderly patients who wanted to be euthanized no longer wanted to die after they were treated. For the terminally ill, we have palliative care, which treats the symptoms of a patient's disease and, eventually, makes them as comfortable as possible to die a natural death. We need to pursue advances in palliative care. But based on the Dutch experience, if euthanasia is legalized, that won't happen. Even Dr. Elsborst admits that palliative care is so inadequate in the Netherlands that patients often ask for euthanasia out of fear of dying in agony. We need to learn from the Dutch. As a nation, we need to kill the pain, not the patient. If euthanasia is allowed, the frail line of trust between doctor and patient would be destroyed. How could a patient believe that their doctor is protecting and benefiting their lives when he or she is counseling towards death? It is also possible that the doctors would abuse their power, like the Dutch doctors who euthanize people without their consent. This is a big issue because studies have shown that people are sometimes euthanized, simply because they are costing too much money to keep alive. Do we really value human life so little? The devaluing of human life was behind the terrors of Nazi Germany. Before the Nazis' extermination camps, there was euthanasia. The terror started by killing the sick, the old, the mentally ill, and the disabled. Finally, they began exterminating the undesirables, like Jews and homosexuals. It is easy to see from the Nazi examples how the definitions for bad quality of life and pain and suffering can become extremely broad. But now euthanasia arguments, instead of dealing with a person's right to life, are being centered around a person's right to die. It is suggested that euthanasia will provide death with dignity. To be honest, I must admit that I am a death with dignity advocate. I believe that every person has the right to die knowing that she's loved and that his doctors did everything they could to make him well and comfortable. I believe that palliative care is the best option for patients who truly want to die with dignity. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms states that everybody has the right to life, liberty, and the security of person. By allowing euthanasia into our country, we are defying those basic rights. If euthanasia is a threat to even one person, it is a threat to us all. When will someone else decide that your life is no longer worth living? As I close, consider these words by Malcolm Muggeridge. This life in us, however low it flickers or fiercely it burns, is still a divine flame, which no man dare presume to put out. Thank you.